In this video, we're going to discuss the activity of the components of a solution. So we have our expression from previous videos about the chemical potential of component I in this given solution. That's equal to the chemical potential of pure liquid I, the star noting that it's the case for pure liquid, plus a gas constant times temperature times the natural log of the ratio of the vapor pressure of component I to the vapor pressure of pure liquid I under the same conditions. And we know that for ideal solutions under Raoul's law, we have that the vapor pressure of component I is equal to the mole fraction of that component times the vapor pressure of the pure liquid. So combining these two equations together, substituting in PI here up there, we get that the chemical potential of component I in an ideal solution is equal to chemical potential of pure liquid I plus RT times the natural log of the mole fraction of I. So this is a really nice uh, expression here because it we have some fairly simple operations going on. It's quite intuitive to understand uh, it's, it, how the liquid, the pure liquid, relates to the same component in solution. It just changes based off of the log of the mole fraction. And it only has one other term here besides this uh, chemical potential of the pure liquid. So what we want is a replacement for the mole fraction in this expression here for chemical potential. We want a replacement for this mole fraction for solutions which are non-ideal. So solutions that do not obey Raoul's law. And we can't get this nice, simple result here. We want something which functions analogously to mole fraction, but for non-ideal solutions. So what we can do is we can take this kind of expression here and expand it in sort of a, almost like a virial equation for liquids, in a sense, like we had the virial equation of state for gases. So let's say we have component one We'll say mu1, its chemical potential in solution, say mu1 sol, is equal to mu1 of pure liquid I. I'll indicate that it's just liquid there. Plus RT log of the mole fraction. And then we'll have an expansion here based off of how much uh, mole fraction of some other component is there. I shouldn't do I, I should do 1, since we're discussing specifically component 1, whatever that might be, plus some coefficient alpha times RT times chi 2 squared, so the chi, the mole fraction of the other component if it's a binary solution, which would just be 1 minus chi 1, so you could say also put this as 1 minus chi 1 quantity squared, plus beta RT chi 2 cubed plus dot dot dot. There'd be gamma and some term that depends on chi 2 to the fourth, etc. And these are just coefficients which are to be determined based off of the behavior of the non ideal solution. For an ideal solution, alpha, beta, and all other uh, coefficients are going to be zero in this type of expansion. So what we can do now is refactorize all of these. Uh, terms here which are tacked on in addition to this chemical potential and write an expression for the vapor pressure of component I. So that vapor pressure is going to be mole fraction times vapor pressure of the pure liquid so that's the Raoul's law part from ideal solutions. Then all of this non-ideal behavior gets tacked on in an exponential. We'll have e to the alpha chi 2 squared plus beta chi 2 cubed plus dot 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 gamma chi 2 to the fourth etc etc so we can write a correspondence between where we have Raoul's law here and we have this non-ideal behavior down here and we're gonna write a correspondence between a quantity we're gonna call the activity and this quantity here which we have the mole fraction so we want something that looks like Raoul's law in terms of a quantity called the activity so what we're going to define is the activity in the following way. So the activity of component I is just equal to the mole fraction of component I. 
and that times this expansion here for the non-ideal behavior of the solution. Alpha chi 2 squared plus beta chi 2 cubed plus dot dot dot. And I guess I should call this 1 again. And these should be, probably be 1's as well. Let's just call everything a 1. Okay, so that gives us this this value here called the activity. So to give a formal uh, definition for this, how we actually get the value for this activity, we could just measure the vapor pressure of a component of a solution at a given under given conditions, and the activity would be the vapor pressure we defined at that given temperature and pressure, whatever conditions we found divided by the vapor pressure of the pure liquid under the same conditions. And we have this caveat here that this is this is true if the vapor is ideal as well. So if the vapor is non-ideal, usually vapor pressures are quite low and the ideal gas law is pretty good. But if the vapor is non-ideal, then instead of the partial pressure and the pressure, we could use partial fugacity and fugacity down here. But for the most part, we're not going to worry about that. Okay, so as I said here, we have this value A sub i. It's called the activity of component i. And it functions analogously to mole fraction, but for non-ideal solutions. So for a given non-ideal solution, what we'll have is that the vapor pressure of component I equals the activity times the vapor pressure of the pure liquid, as we can see by that relation there. So some limiting results for what the activity value can be. We know that the activity of a component has to approach the mole fraction of that component as the mole fraction of that component approaches 1. Because as the mole fraction of the component approaches 1, all solutions behave ideally in the limit of purity. So as the solution becomes more and more pure, the mole fraction approaches 1, the activity becomes closer and closer to the mole fraction, and uh, Raoul's law will be obeyed at very high mole fractions. So let's substitute in uh, our activity in here for the chemical potential of the given component in solution now. What we're going to have is that the chemical potential in solution of component I is equal to the chemical potential of pure liquid I under the same conditions plus gas constant times temperature times natural log of its activity. So we still get to keep this nice short closed form here for the chemical potential and we just use activity instead of mole fraction. And just like for fugacity, how the fugacity coefficient defined how the behavior of a solution deviated, behavior of a gas de deviated from the ideal gas law, the activity coefficient is going to tell us how the activity of a solution component deviates from Raoul's law. It deviates from being an ideal solution. So this gamma i here is the activity coefficient I'm going to go ahead and box that in as well as an important result and this given co activity coefficient as I said a solution is ideal if the activity coefficient equals 1 for all components at all mole fractions.